I have always been a huge fan of video games. And recently I've been seeing all these remakes and remasters of old classics. And I wanted to have a go at some of the iconic characters from the video games that I grew up playing. The GTA series is very close to my heart and GTA San Andreas is one of the greatest games ever created. So I recreated all of the classic characters using AI and transformed them into these amazing realistic renders. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can create this kind of AI remasters using open source and free tools in your computer locally. So in this video, we're gonna transform this low poly old school render of CJ from GTA San Andreas into something like this that looks like out of a newer video game created in Unreal Engine 5. And we'll do all of this using Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11. To get started, I'll show you guys how to install Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11. If you already have Stable Diffusion set up in your local PC, then you can skip ahead to the next section. And I'll put all the links in the description below. The first thing you'll need is Git. This one allows us to download files and other dependencies from GitHub directly to your Windows PC. So download this one for your Windows PC. Next, install Python 3.10. I'm using Python 3.10.6. Scroll all the way down and under files, you'll find installer for Windows 64-bit. Download and install it. Once that's done, we'll go to the automatic 11.11 page on GitHub and then download the UI for stable diffusion. To do that, we'll click the code button here, click the copy icon over here. Next, we'll go into the folder where you want to install Automatic 11.11. Click on the address bar of your Explorer window, type CMD, hit enter. It will open a command prompt and then type git space clone space and paste the address of Automatic 11.11 that you just copied. Hit enter and it will install Automatic 11.11 and all the dependencies required for this application. Once that's done, Go into your Stable Diffusion Web UI folder, scroll down, find the web UI dash user dot bat file. It will say Windows batch file over here. Double click it and it will open the Stable Diffusion Automatic 11.11 Web UI for you. Once that's done, we need to download ControlNet and the Realistic Vision checkpoint that we'll be using in this experiment. Go to Civit AI, download Realistic Vision version 5.1, click the download button. Once the file is downloaded, copy it and then go back to your Stable Diffusion installation folder, go into Models, Stable Diffusion and paste it here. Once that's done, we'll install the ControlNet extension for Automatic 11.11. Go to the link for ControlNet, click on Code, copy this link, go back to Stable Diffusion, click on the Extensions tab, click Install from URL, paste it here. Click install. Once that's done installing, you'll have to download some ControlNet model files. Go to this link on Hugging Face. From here, you have to download both the PTH, that's Python file, and the YAML file. For this one, we'll be using the depth and the canny model. So download these four files. Copy them, go to your Stable Diffusion installation folder, go to extension, then SD Web UI ControlNet folder, then go to the models folder and paste all of the downloaded items here. Once that's done, go to the A-Detailer page on GitHub, click on code, copy the link, go back to Stable Diffusion, extensions, install from URL, paste it here, install. Once all of the extensions and the files are ready, go to Settings, hit Reload UI. Once everything is installed and up and running, go to the Image to Image tab in Stable Diffusion. Make sure you have the Realistic Vision checkpoint selected over here. I'll put the prompt and the negative prompt in the description below so you can copy it if you want. I'll also explain the structure of the prompt. So I wrote down cinematic portrait of CJ. So I described what kind of image am I trying to create. Then I wrote black guy, white tank top, dead eyes, short hair, creamed goatee, skin texture. These keywords explain his appearance, how I want the main character to look like in this rendered image. Then I wrote skin texture, highly detailed, hyper-realistic, shallow depth of field. These are some keywords to describe how much detail I want in this image. Then we have out of focus city background, palm trees, sky, cloud, buildings. These are some of the stuff I want to add in the background. As you can see, in the source image here, we don't have anything in the background, right? I want to add all of these items in the background of this image. Finally, we have a few more keywords like bokeh, soft shadows, glow, cinematic high-key lighting. 
These are parameters to describe what kind of lighting I want in this image. And finally, we have film grain and Instagram moody edit. These are some parameters to describe how I want the final image to look like. In the negative prompts, I have a few keywords here that I copied from Civit AI. And then I'm using a few textual inversions. So you can download them from Civit AI. I won't go into these details. These are not necessary for image to image edits, but I always use them on my image generations. Inside image to image tab under generation, we have image to image over here. Import the image of the subject that you're trying to remaster. Then we have the sampling method. So you can use Euler A or DPM or DDIM. It doesn't matter. It will just give you different kinds of results. In my experiments, I usually use DPM++ 2M Keras because these give me better results than other sampling methods. Then we have sampling steps, leave it to 20. And then we have the size parameter over here. Set it to 768 by 768 for now. CFG scale seven. This will kind of tell us how much of the prompt we want to affect our image generation. Finally, we have denoising strength. I have set it to 0.85. You can adjust it based on the result. If you want the image to be changed completely, then keep it close to one. Then we have the seed number. I have kept it to random for now, but if you want to generate more images in the same style, you can copy the seed number in the future once it's generated and use that seed number for future generations. Next, we have the A Detailer. This is the extension that we installed. This will help us create realistic eyes, nose, and lips in our image, add details to our facial structure. When you generate an image with AI, sometimes you'll see that there are artifacts and weird things happening on the face and the eyes and the nose and the lips. But if you use a detailer, it will refine all of those small issues and fix it for you. Scroll down and go to control net. Enable it. Click on low VRAM if you have less VRAM than eight gigabytes. Click on pixel perfect and click Upload independent control net image. Import the same image over here and then select canny. Now, if you click this button over here, it will show you a preview how control net is working. As you can see, we have a lot of details in this one, so you don't need to adjust anything. But if you were to adjust some parameters here to make it more detailed or less detailed, you can do that by changing the canny low threshold and high threshold. For this reference image, we don't have anything going on in the background. For some source images, you might have some background elements in there. And to make sure that your background elements are captured properly, you can add or stack another control net unit to your process. So to do that, click control net unit one, enable low VRAM, feel perfect, and we'll be using the depth parameter. Next, we have control weight for both of these. So I want the canny processor to have more weight. So the image generation will depend more. Don't set it to one. Sometimes if you set it to one, it gives you weird results. So it's best to keep it close to one. And then starting control step. In the image generation process, when do you want control net to kick in? So I'll say maybe like at 0 0.05, uh, it can end at maybe nine. And then we have depth. For this one, I'll set control weight to say 7.5. I'll start it at 1.5 and end it at maybe 7.5. You can keep control mode to balance, but if you feel that the image generation is depending too much on your control net, but not so much on your prompt, in that case, you can select my prompt is more important for these two models here under control mode. Okay, we're done setting up and then we'll hit generate and it will generate something like this for us. Thank you guys for watching. I hope this was helpful. Let me know if you have any questions, comment them below. Check out my profile for more tutorials on Generative AI.